Sponsored by PCBWay. I printed way too many benchies to find out what the actual difference is between every nozzle for my bamboo printers. I made this tiny boy with the smallest nozzle and these two big boys with the biggest nozzle and the thickest print profile. I also printed everything in between to find out what nozzle is the best. And as you'd expect, it depends. First of all, what's the point of changing the nozzle? If you're printing miniatures or objects where accuracy matters, then you want the 0.2 millimeter nozzle because it produces the smallest lines and the smallest layer heights. And for the best detail and clearances. While you can go bigger, Bamboo's largest nozzle is the 0.8 millimeter nozzle. There is nothing detailed or smooth about it, but what it can do is fast. Layers will be thick. There is no such thing as tolerances, but you can prototype larger objects exponentially faster than any other nozzle here. While some of these benchies may take minutes using that nozzle, this would take days, but this took about nine hours. Every printer comes with a 0.4 nozzle, and you can also print with a 0.6 nozzle, which will balance accuracy with speed. In all these tests, we'll be using the standard print profile recommended by Bamboo for each nozzle. You might be here because you just bought a new nozzle, so let's look at how to change these on both the A-Series and the P or X-Series. First, the A-Series is completely toolless. First, you want to remove the filament by heating the nozzle and retracting that filament. Once the nozzle has cooled, then from the bottom, pull on the front cover, which is held on with plastic clips, so it'll pop off, probably violently, eventually. Remove the silicone sock on the nozzle and pull away the two-part latch, The nozzle is held in magnetically, so simply pull it out. You put your new nozzle in, reverse the process to reinstall everything. When installing the front cover, it hangs on the top, so push on the bottom half. I got awful footage of changing the nozzle on the P-Series, so I'm going to defer to the official Bamboo video, which did this without the top cover, and it was kind of a good idea. Once again, make sure you heat the nozzle, retract the filament, let it cool down. The front fan cover is held on with magnets, so pull it off, carefully pull on the fan connection to completely remove it. Carefully remove the two remaining connections on the PCB. There are two screws you need a small Allen wrench for, holding the nozzle in place, then you pull straight down to remove the nozzle. Then reverse the process to install your new nozzle. If you don't seat the connections right, like I did, you'll get an error that the fan speed is abnormal, and that was because the nozzle fan wasn't connection wasn't fully seated, so take another look. Using both my A1 Mini and the P1S, I printed benches that were the same size, physical size was relative to the nozzle size, high detailed miniatures, and test objects containing all sorts of bridges, overhangs, increasingly smaller details, and these spikes that you can see had varying degrees of success. Then I also printed the smallest and largest benches I could pull off. Let's start with a bunch of the same size benches with different nozzles. The smallest 0.2 millimeter nozzle has a default layer height of 0.1 millimeter and took 2 hours and 20 minutes. Each nozzle did get faster, but also less smooth because the 0.4 nozzle has a layer height of 0.2 millimeters, which is double, and printed in 43 minutes, considerably faster. The 0.6 millimeter nozzle has a layer height of 0.3 millimeters and took 22 minutes. Finally, the largest nozzle, the 0.8 millimeter, had a layer height of, you guessed it, 0.4 millimeters and took 17 minutes. I was trying to think of what I could say about each model, but I realized the bar for quality is subjective. So I'm gonna show you some side-by-side -side shots of each model and let you draw your own conclusions before I share mine. While looking at these models, if you're done with your drafts, then check out PCBWay for your final production prints. Professional 3D printing, CNC machining, custom PCBs, and even PCB assembly. With no minimum order quantities, they will help get any project off the ground and new customers can use the link in the description below for $5 off your first order.
To test supports and find details, I found a Mimic miniature. We'd expect Point 2 Nozzle to be better at small details, and while it was, I didn't realize how fragile the model would be. Use a little more infill, or when pulling away supports, you're also likely to break the model like the tongue coming out. Point 0.8 Nozzle obviously had the least amount of detail and the strongest supports since it can't under extrude as much, but the model is also stronger and it wasn't an issue. These relative size benchies were more of a fun idea to scale the model with the nozzle. I got down to 12.5% with the .2mm nozzle before it was small enough it couldn't print the smokestack. Rest of it was just out of curiosity and I feel the detail also scales as expected. I wanted to use the thickest profile for the largest nozzle and print a benchy that fills my P1S. If you do this too, then you should use some glue, unless you like spaghetti, and wasting 750 grams of filament for a $10 mistake. Finally, we have some test objects for overhang, spires, and clearances. Overhangs did just fine, so there's no news there. Clearances became an issue as the nozzle got larger. The goal was that the final print would have these cylinders fall out to test different size gaps. The spires at the top really only printed fine on the smallest nozzle. Again, don't use big nozzles for small details.
Alright, I hope you have a better idea of what each nozzle can do. The 0.2mm nozzle was great for tiny details or anything where clearances do matter. The largest 0.8mm nozzle is great for super fast prototypes are turning out large models faster than usual. The 0.4 and the 0.6 is the sweet spot all rounders. There's a reason every printer comes with that 0.4 nozzle because it's fairly detailed without taking exponentially long to print. I'd recommend the 0.6 nozzle if you're not printing interlocking parts, things like display stands, uh, pegboard mounts, planters, etc. will print faster on the 0.6 and still have acceptable tolerances. Finally, you need a 0.6 or larger nozzle to print fiber reinforced filament. So my P1S is going to get the hardened steel 0.6 nozzle while my A1 Mini will retain the 0.4. I have every nozzle now and only takes minutes to swap after you've done it a few times, so using the 0.8 or the 0.2 is not a big deal anymore. This video was a little different for me focusing more on the show instead of the tell. If you liked this, let me know by liking the video itself, and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Thanks for sticking with me, and I'll see you again soon.